Today we're talking about advanced HomeKit notifications with the controller for HomeKit app. So this could be a game changer. This feature offers a new level of interaction between you and your smart home. You can get custom notifications if you leave your lights on, you know, when you leave the house, or maybe if you've left a window open for too long, get notifications when batteries are low, or get a reminder to clean the coffee pot once it's been used 30 times. There's a lot we can do with these notifications, and I'm excited to dive in, explore some of the possibilities, and show you this cool new feature. Let's go. Yo, what's up guys? My name is Shane. If this is your first time here and this channel is all about building an easy Apple home smart home with new videos published every Sunday and live streams every Wednesday. Today's video is sponsored by Eve. Now Eve is a company that makes some of my favorite home kit smart home products, including their door and window sensor, which is great for automations. Maybe you wanna automate some of those holiday lights you have set up around the house. You can easily set automation to turn on your lights when you enter a room, for example. Also, the Eve Energy Smart Plug is great for making those old, dumb holiday lights smart. I use a bunch of these, and I'm able to automate my entire holiday setup, which I love. Since their products support thread, they're super fast and reliable and great for using in your smart home automations. Eve makes quality smart home products that are future-proof with a strong focus on privacy, which I certainly appreciate. Check out the link below to get some of their products for your smart home. And big thanks to Eve for sponsoring today's video. Now, the default home app is great. And, you know, I like it for a lot of things, but it doesn't really unlock the full power or potential of HomeKit. And that's where third-party HomeKit apps really come in. The controller for HomeKit app is one of those third-party apps that I highly recommend. I've been using it for a long time. Now, if you're not already, you know, aware of the controller for HomeKit app, it is a third-party HomeKit app that gives you access to do much more with your HomeKit setup than you can do, you know, in the native home. Home app. You can set up more advanced automations. You can get access to all of the attributes of each of your HomeKit accessories. You know, the native Home app actually hides a lot of this stuff. There are backup and restore features, smart folders, logs, maintenance tools, and the ability to save and store your HomeKit codes. One of the newest features just added in their most recent update, again, is this advanced notifications option or a notification server, essentially. And this is a really interesting feature and something you guys must be interested in too because I've had a number of you requesting uh, that I cover it here on the channel. Now this app does work on iOS, iPad OS, and Mac OS. It's not a cheap app, costing around $65 US for the lifetime license. You can pay for, you know, a yearly subscription also. Personally, I kind of like the lifetime license, you know, pay once, have it forever kind of thing. But either way, in my opinion, it is a great addition to your toolkit for anyone who's getting serious about building a HomeKit smart home. So let's kind of dive into these advanced notifications that we can now do. Essentially, this feature gives you a way to create much more useful notifications for your home kit smart home. And on top of that, each notification can have multiple actions attached to it. So you can choose what to do with your smart home when you receive a notification, which is really cool. So what are some ways that we can use this? Well, there are some good examples over there on their website, which I will put a link to below. And I'm just gonna create some examples, some real world examples for you here today. One of the things that really drives me crazy in my house is when people in my family, usually, you know, the kids, leaves the door unlocked. So what I'm going to do is create a custom notification today that will tell me if my door has been unlocked for 30 minutes or more. And to take it further, I'm going to add some actions that I can, you know, use when I get that notification. One will be, of course, to lock the door. And I'll also create a snooze action. So I would use that maybe if I'm like hanging out on the front porch or something like that and don't actually want the door to lock, I can just snooze this notification uh, for an hour. And then in another hour, it'll send me another notification. And you can probably imagine, you know, this similar type of automation could be good for a number of different things like, you know, doors or windows left open, that sort of thing. We'll be using a combination of shortcuts, automations and the new notification server 
feature. Now it sounds kind of scary, but trust me, it's really not that bad once you kind of understand the way this all works. All right, so I've got my iPad here. And like I said, you can use this on an iPad, iPhone, or the Mac. I really love using this on the Mac, but we're gonna use it on my iPad. And I'm just gonna kind of show you how to set these up. So first, it's a couple parts, but first we need to create the notification and then we need to create the automation. Okay, so first let's create the notification in the controller for HomeKit app. So I'm gonna open up that controller for HomeKit app. And um, <clears throat> so you can see to the left here, this is our notification section. So the first time you open up this app um, or this notification section here, it's gonna kind of tell you some a couple of prompts to enable notifications and you can set up your device to receive those notifications so it's like two or three steps really simple uh, but once you do that we can create a notification so let's go ahead and do that and uh, this is for that lock so I'm gonna create a scheduled or actually a delayed notification so I want this to happen 30 minutes after the door is unlocked so I'm gonna create a delay we're gonna call this the title we're gonna say the front door has been unlocked for 30 minutes. And then I can create optional text here. What would you like to do? Uh, interruption level. Now this, uh, you see we have a few options here, active, passive, or time sensitive. I'm gonna use time sensitive because I wanna see this notification no matter what. Uh, even if I'm in a focus mode or something. I hear that the developers are gonna be working on also adding uh, critical alerts um, in here, so that'll be cool, but time sensitive will be perfect for this, so I'm gonna choose that. And behavior is gonna be either keep the, all notifications or just the latest. So we don't wanna keep getting notifications about this, so I'm gonna use keep latest notification on this one. It'll default and give you a snooze option right here. You can change this time. I'm gonna leave it one hour. Like I said, that's gonna be perfect for this. And I can also create some additional actions that we can kind of give us like a little menu sort of to choose from. We can execute a scene, execute a workflow, or open view, meaning you can like open the controller app. So I'm actually gonna use that too. So that would be pretty cool. So we're gonna uh, give us the option to snooze the notification, lock the front door, or uh, let's do one to open a camera. So maybe we wanna see what's going on out there if we're not home or something. Um, so let's first execute scene. And so I do have a scene already called lock doors. So I'm gonna choose this one. And we're also gonna add another notification. Again, open view. And we're gonna look for that doorbell camera. So I'll have these three options right here anytime I receive this notification. The starred one right here, as you can see, will be the primary action. So um, if you wanted like a kind of a default, if you just tap the, the uh, notification, it'll do this. So we could choose one of these if you want. I'm gonna leave that off so that I have to kind of long press and, and choose one of these options here. Next is our delay. It's 60 seconds, I mean 60 minutes right now. So we wanna change that to 30 minutes. Um, and we're gonna leave allow rescheduling on. And down here, lastly, we have the different devices that we can send the notification to. You can see I have my iPhone, my MacBook Pro, and my iPad Pro, which is this device. Again, uh, you kind of have to set this up when you first open up the notification section of this app. If you want to send this to multiple uh, devices, other people in your family, you just need to install the controller for HomeKit app on their device uh, and kind of enable those notifications. But I'm going to send this to all my devices here. And these URL triggers, this is worth noting, this is what we're gonna need. The first one is to send the notification. It's basically like a webhook. And the second one is gonna to be to cancel the notification, okay? So I'm gonna come back to these. I'm actually gonna go ahead and copy this first URL trigger right here. You can see it copied. Next, we're gonna go over into the home app and we're gonna set up our automation because we need to use convert to shortcut. So I'm gonna open this up. Um, I'm over here in my home app under the automations tab and I'm just going to create a new automation. Let's do an accessory is controlled and we're going to look for that front door lock. It is right here. Choose next. We'll choose unlocks. And if we scroll all the way down, you will see the option to convert to shortcut. That is what we need. 
this is kind of default. I'm gonna close this, we don't need that. We'll add action and we are looking for an if action. So I'm gonna drag this in here and basically we're gonna say if the door is locked or unlocked. So we will select our accessory under input here. All right, so front door. So if the front door, we need to change this to lock mechanism current state. And this might look different for different devices, you know, you can kind of play around with the options that's available, but if the lock mechanism current state is unlocked, and now we want to send the notification right here. So I'm going to look for get contents of URL, this one right here, and we're going to put this in here. And this is where we're going to paste that URL that we just copied over from the controller app. So I'm going to paste that there. Okay, so looking good. Uh, now we can we need another one of these actions right here. So I'm going to look for it again, get contents of URL. And I'm going to drag this in right here. Now this is where we need to put our otherwise. So the cancel notification. So otherwise, in other words, if the door is locked, we want to cancel the notification. So to do that, let's just go back to the controller app. And if we scroll down in our notification here, we need to copy this cancel notification URL. And then we're going to go back to the home app and paste it right in here. There we go, good to go. So if the front door is unlocked, it's going to uh, send this URL right here, which is our notification URL. Otherwise, meaning it's locked, it will send the cancel URL, okay? So pretty straightforward, right? We'll tap next. I can rename this, so I'm gonna call this controller notific Oop, notification lock and hit done. All right, so pretty good to go there. Now let's go back into the controller for HomeKit app and I'm gonna save this. If we go check out our automations, one thing I wanna show you real quick, if we look for that same notification, controller notification lock right here, but we need to kind of change these right here. So let's just delete uh, these and I'm just gonna tap on one of these and we're gonna change this from locks mechanism current state to each value change. So uh, that's not an option we have in the home app. So we have to do that in the controller for HomeKit app. Again, controller kind of gives you a lot more kind of access to HomeKit than the home app does, which is weird, but we can use that value right here, each value change. So anytime the value changes, it's gonna kind of check to make sure this works. Uh, and you can see execute, um, it says this are Apple Home ex exclusive because we did that convert to shortcut right here. So that's all we need to do. And that's it for setting up that first notification. So a little confusing maybe, but uh, once you kind of see how it works, you know, we're just using that convert to shortcut and basically saying, okay, if the door is locked, do this. If it's unlocked, do that. And using the controller for HomeKit app to kind of delay that notification. So I hope that makes sense. Pretty excited about setting this up because this is actually, you know, the perfect solution for a real world problem that I have here in my smart home. Let's go ahead and create one more. Let's do just, uh, let's do a counter notification. So this is something that I've been asked before how to do something like this. Maybe you want, you know, some kind of notification sent, you know, if you use your coffee pot 30 times Times, or you know if you feed your fish so many times or whatever you can use this for a lot of different things um, but just to kind of give you some ideas here let's go ahead and create a new notification so this time we're going to do a counter notification so you can see example here every third time the notification is triggered lots of functionality here so let's just call this it's time to clean the coffee pot uh, and we can say it's been used 30 times since the last cleaning. Um, here you can do active time. So let's keep this one active. Uh, behavior, we're gonna also do keep latest notification here. 
Snooze, uh, we can change this one to snooze maybe for like, I don't want us to be reminded every hour or something. So let's do six hours on this one. And next we need to use the count. So this is gonna be how many times the device needs to be turned on or whatever um, in order to send the notification. So again, we're doing 30 of course. Now reset uh, is either automatic or manual. So that's after it hits 30 how will you reset that counter? So it's either automatic, which is self-explanatory, or manual. And um, for something like a cleaning, you probably want it to be manual, so we'll choose that. We'll send it to our iPhone and iPad Pro, and here is our URLs that we're gonna need for our shortcut. So let's go ahead and open up the Home app. You can do this in the Shortcuts app also. Either is fine, but I'm gonna create a new automation. Uh, we'll do it in the, in the Home app and we'll say when an accessory is controlled. So let's do, um, this could be our coffee machine right here, so I'm gonna choose next. We're gonna say turns on, choose next. Once again, scroll down to convert to shortcut. We're gonna delete this action, and we just want to get contents of URL, just like last time, and we're gonna paste in that URL, which I did not copy yet. So let me open the controller app and I'm going to copy the raise count. And we're gonna paste it in here. And that's it, we can tap next and we're done. That's all you have to do for this one. So we'll just call it controller coffee notification, tap done. And that's it with it. Once you get this notification, when you've hit that uh, 30 number, you can touch and hold and you can actually reset it. And you can also see the current count number. Alternatively, since uh, you have a separate URL just for the reset counter, you could create a switch, you know, a toggle or a dummy switch or something like that in HomeKit to easily reset the switch. A lot of stuff you can do there with those URLs and the controller for HomeKit app. So there are a couple of examples showing you how you can use this new notification server feature with the controller for HomeKit app. Again, this app has lots of other really great features that might be worth taking a look at. Definitely a worthy tool for your Apple Home Toolkit. Let me know in the comments below what creative ways you plan to use these advanced notifications with your smart home. Thanks again to Eve for sponsoring today's video. Again, check out that link below to get some of their awesome HomeKit products today. And if you're really into this sort of stuff, you might want to check out my automations and shortcuts playlist, which I'll put right over here that has a number of other videos showing you how to do some pretty cool things similar to this, utilizing automations and shortcuts and that sort of thing. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.